All right, next up we have David Needham. David has a heart for helping beginners to feel empowered and grow. He uses his public speaking experience to share topics clearly and concisely. Topics range from introductions to fundamental building blocks to soft skills like productivity and public speaking. Hello everyone, welcome to Find That Bug You Made Months Ago with Git Bisect. My name is David Needham. Um, you can find the slides at my website, davidneedham.me slash wcboise2019, and this will be uh, available on the very last slide as well, so uh, feel free to wait until then. So I am a developer advocate at Pantheon. Uh, a lot of what I do involves going to conferences just like this and sharing what I know with the community and then taking everything I learn in the community back to Pantheon. Uh, but when I'm not working for Pantheon, I volunteer with a, uh, a documentary. It's a World War II documentary, and I help with their WordPress website. Um, the name of the documentary, as you can see, is The Girl Who Wore Freedom. And I didn't build this website, but I inherited it, and I try to help out any way I can a few hours a week. So um, at the very bottom of this website, there is, oops, there is a newsletter sign up. And one day as I was going across the website, just doing my regular maintenance, I noticed that the newsletter signup was missing. And I didn't know why. I, like I said, I didn't build the website originally, so I don't know exactly what was generating the, the newsletter. Uh, I didn't know when it actually disappeared. Um, and I spent hours trying to find the plugin that was generating that or the custom code that was generating that. And eventually, I did solve the problem. I found what I did to cause that to disappear, and I fixed it hours later. If I had known about Git Bisect, it would have taken minutes to find uh, what caused this. So to help illustrate Git Bisect to you, uh, I'm going to show a simulation. Uh, for this simula simulation, uh, you can see on the screen here, we have commits. Uh, from one all the way up to head, which is where we are currently at, our, our current code. And we also have a simulated terminal window there on the very bottom, the little shell, the little dollar sign, so that you can see as I'm typing the commands, I'm you know, again simulating this, what you'll actually get, what you type, what you see in response. So Git Bisect is a tool that you can use that's built within Git to identify the plugin or I'm sorry, not the plugin, but the actual commit that introduced some sort of a problem on your site. And it's actually very, very simple to get started. All you have to do, you say git bisect bad, and you tell it which commit is currently bad. And most times it's gonna be your current commit because right now you've noticed something is bad. And so you can just say git bisect bad. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Um, how do you think you tell it something is good? Well you say git bisect good, and then you tell it something to identify which commit was working. Well, in this case, uh, you can provide any sort of identifying uh, factors for the commit. So you could do a hash, you could do a, a tag, if a tag represents that when it was working. So in this case, we're saying, okay, well, it was working way back in that first commit, and it wasn't working right now. Um, so once you do the bad, once you do the good, git bisect jumps in, and it says, okay, well, there are, you know, bisecting 98 revisions, and we can figure out which specific commit is responsible in about six guesses. So it makes sense between the first one and the last one, there's about 96. And so what it does is it actually checks out your commit, your code, at about the halfway point. It goes about halfway in between when it didn't work and when it does work, and it says, let's check out the code right there. And then you go and you check out your site. You, you look at it. Is your code working? Is your site you know, looking the way you expect it to? And since we're using a content management system, since there's a database involved, you might have to also have a database that you check out and, and put in here as well. But uh, let's just say we've done that, we've checked out this commit, and as it turns out, this commit is good. So we say git bisect good. And it assumes since this commit is good and the first commit was good, all of the commits between there are good. And so now we have about half as many commits to search through. So it continues and it says, okay, now we have 49 revisions left to test and we can figure out which one's responsible in about five more guesses. 
And this just continues. So we say, okay, 75, we look at the code and it's broken. The newsletter sign up is missing. So we say get bisect bad. It assumes now because that one's bad and the, the head is currently bad, that all of the ones between those two are bad. And it just continues through this process where it checks out about halfway through, you look at the site, you answer good or bad to say whether or not the code is actually working at that particular point. And then eventually you end up at a point where there's really only one commit left. And this is the turning point. This is where you say good or bad, but if you say this is good, then it means that the bad commit is commit number 75. If you say this is bad, then the commit was commit number 74. Well, as it turns out in this particular case, Commit number 74 was bad. So you say, git bisect bad. And it says, okay, great. This is the first bad commit. And it shows you all of the information about this. It gives you uh, the person who actually made this commit. In this case, it was me, I made that commit. And somewhat embarrassingly, it gives you the actual commit message, which as you can see says, removing plugins that aren't used. Yeah, I, I probably removed a plugin that was responsible for the newsletter signup that I did not even realize was doing the newsletter signup. So the way that I can fix this is I continue by saying git bisect reset. It takes me right back to the head, right to the beginning of where I was, and it checks me out where I was at the very, very, very beginning. And now I know which commit to go to. I can see what plugins I removed and then try to figure out from there which one is responsible for the newsletter signup. Uh, or I could just revert that commit completely and be right back and able to continue. If I had used this instead of toiling through finding exactly what the problem was, it would have taken about as long as what you just experienced. Uh, it takes just seconds for it to go through this process. The longest part is really just checking out the, the database backup or you know, kind of making sure that that piece is there, if, if that's even a factor. Now, some things to be aware of as you're going through and trying out git bisect is, you know, you can just sort of condense that command. If you already know, you know, head and, you know, the actual ID of the commit, you can condense that in a single command. You can say git bisect start and then the bad commit and then the good commit and it will start running right from there. Also, if you suspect that you know where in your code the sort of problem was introduced, you can also point it in that direction as well. So in this case, you know, with the case of the plugin, maybe I could have guessed it might have been a plugin of some sort. So I could have told it, look in the plugins directory. And it would actually say, well, you know, there are 100 commits from between it was broken and when it worked, but only about 20 of those have changes within the plugins directory. So it will actually say instead of 100 commits, you only have about 20 commits to actually have to sort through. Now this gets even better if you start thinking about beaming problems. If you've ever wondered why a button changed colors or something like that, um, you can easily point it not just to the folder, but the particular CSS file that's responsible for something like that. You can also say git bisect skip. Now a case where you might wanna say skip is if you're, uh, maybe you've in the past created a commit that resulted in a white screen of death. You've made a mistake, you've committed something, and maybe you need another commit to fix it later. If in the process of testing your site, Git Bisect checks out this commit that had some sort of bug and you can't actually view your site, or it's just not a good representation of what was going on at that point, you can say skip and Git Bisect will check out another commit that's sort of around that commit. Of course, it also helps to have WordPress installed locally. This all can go much faster if you're running uh, it locally on your own computer. Um, and then if you're going through and testing things, um, having a sort of piece of paper where you write down all of the things that you're testing to make sure that you're doing a consistent process every time that you're testing. Um, but, you know, that's great. Like having a consistent process that you can manually go through time after time is better than nothing, uh, but it can get even better when you start automating. So we don't, we're not limited to just the manual testing using Git Bisect, but you can actually automate some of it using just about any automated testing tool that you might already be using. Uh, or even something simpler. So in this case, you could actually write a simple little bash script that just runs on your computer and checks for something. And all that it look, checks for is a pass or a fail, a zero or a one. And rather than you having to say, get bisect good, get bisect bad, 
the one and the O, it'll run that test every time. And then you just have to sit back and let the test go through everything. It'll answer the questions and, and go through. So let me show you an example. Here is a simple little bash script, a little bash that you can set up on your, your, your computer running locally. And all that this does is check for a particular function in a particular PHP file. You know, so that could be something pretty easy, but in that example where I mentioned with the CSS on a button, what if you wanted to know exactly when a button color changed from one thing to the other? This would be another case where you could put in that CSS, the, the hex uh, uh, thing to show the color code or whatnot, and then you could actually see, you know, it would return fail or pass all that, all that time, and you just have to run the, the git bisect command once. So this is one example. Um, but we're not limited to bash. We could also get a little bit more complicated with some PHP. Um, I actually got inspiration from this talk by John Blackburn, and he gave a presentation at WordCamp US last year uh, where he used this example. He actually uh, bootstraps WordPress, he renders his menu, and he looks at the HTML generated within his menu. And he uses that code that's generated to tell if his menu is returning the results that he expects. Based on that, He's able to, again, use git bisect to basically test to make sure that his menu is consistent, that it, the menu always has everything he's expecting it to have. Another example is using a tool like uh, backstop.js. So tomorrow I'm giving a talk on visual regression testing with backstop.js. If you've never used a visual regression testing tool, it's actually very, very simple to get started. It basically takes screenshots of two versions of your website and it uses computers to compare them. It highlights the differences between the two. So if you can imagine a case where something has changed on your website, you know, maybe you've done a update to a plugin and all of a sudden something disappeared, or in our case, our newsletter disappeared from our site, um, it would be able to take screenshots of, you know, like say your, your local site versus the live production site or something and then compare them and it will error out, it'll you know, fail whenever something has changed. And you can set that up however you want, but you can set that up here with git bisect so that it runs that test every time at every prompt, and based on that pass fail, it'll pass or fail. And then also bhat. And so like some of the previous talks that were just in here, um, there's all sorts of automated testing you can pick from. Um, another one is bhat, and you could do really cool things like what if you wanna test if an editor is able to log in and create a post on your site or moderate a comment or um, sign up for a newsletter or something like that. Using bhat, that's another testing framework that you can use to actually do that. You can have a process where they log in and test specific functionality on the site. So you could also plug that in here. So it runs every time Git Bisect prompts you for pass or fail. And of course, some situations where Git Bisect is useful is anytime that you've inherited a project. Anytime that you're really not aware of the code that's there, um, I might be great at documenting my code. I might be great at explaining to my predecessor why I chose a particular plugin or something like that. But there's all sorts of sort of unknowns. There's all sorts of feelings. Like when, when you have a project that you're working on, you make decisions for reasons that are just really difficult to explain or articulate sometimes. So anytime that you inherit a project, there's going to be things that you just don't understand. Personally, also, if it's been a while since you've worked on a project, you might be inheriting the project from yourself in a way. And so that's another scenario. Um, but it also comes into play when you have clients who are changing code. Again, someone else other than you. If you want to debug a problem that a client introduced to your site, that's something else you can do with Git Bisect. And then also, and this is another example that, that John shared at WordCamp US, but uh, if you want to test for regression, if you want to make sure that under no circumstances does this problem get reintroduced, you can set up a test that says, you know, based on continuous integration or some other sort of automated process, it always goes through and runs this git bisect and it verifies that nothing has actually changed between the two so that you're always confident that you deploy, you haven't introduced any sort of regression or problem. So I have uh, docs uh, or links here to all of the diff various resources that I pulled from for this talk. So if you'd like to dig in deeper, I'd be happy to talk more about that and answer some questions. But the links are all here that you can check out yourself. Um, and then I just want to thank you all for coming here to WordCamp Boise and for taking time to listen to my talk. I hope you'll join me for the visual regression talk.
tomorrow as well. Thank you very much. I think we have a few minutes for questions, if anyone has any questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question was, uh, in my scenario with the newsletter sign up and it disappeared, uh, was I jumping in and taking a look at the site itself or checking for code whether or not it existed? Um, for this specific situation, I have to check the site itself. I, I didn't know what code was responsible at all, so I didn't have anything to check. Um, I could have automated it using like uh, John Blackburn's example and like bootstrapped the site and then checked for that line of uh, code, the HTML being rendered on the actual page. Uh, but that was beyond what I knew at the time. So I actually opened up my browser, uh, checked it, said, you know, pass or fail. So I'd say uh, bad or good. And then I would refresh the page and check it again after it checked out a new commit. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all very much.